the end of Jake Paul could be closer than we think. Now, let's start off with his past. Let's start off where he started from. Him and his brother, they moved in from Ohio to L.A. You know, they hopped on Vine. Somehow they became famous on Vine, and they moved over to YouTube. Once they started doing YouTube, everybody knows their past. One of the most hated YouTubers out there, him and his brother were hated. You know, everybody was seen them as these cringy brothers who just make these cringe vlogs. In Team 10, he put a lot of videos out there. Now, what happened? KSI, another YouTuber from the UK, had a boxing match with Joe Weller. After that boxing match, he caught out Jake Paul and Logan Paul. And what happened? KSI fought Logan. Jake Paul fought Deji. Jake Paul got the win. Now, what happened after Jake Paul, once he beat Deji? What happened? Well, the build-up to KSI versus Logan Paul, there was a rumor that it was his other YouTuber named Anisong Gibb from the UK, and he said that he had something to prove against Jake Paul, that Jake Paul wasn't a challenge and he was calling him out. So this fight ended up happening, and what happened? Jake Paul ended up embarrassing Anisong Gibb. And then from then on, Jake Paul really got into the boxing game. So what did he do? He caught out an NBA star, Nate Robinson. He knocked him out clean. This is when people were giving Jake Paul credibility. This is when Jake Paul was blowing up, but not for his past, not for his cringy videos, but for his boxing experience. Then he ended up calling out a retired UFC fighter who goes by the name of Ben Askren. Everybody was clowning Jake Paul saying, why are you going after an old retired MMA fighter? But at the same time, he was doing this to build his credibility. A lot of boxers can't say that their third fight or their first professional fight was an MMA fighter. A lot of boxers, their first third fights were nobodies, people that nobody knows. But Jake Paul, although it was a retired MMA fighter, it was an MMA fighter. It was somebody who's been in the game. And obviously what happened? First round, he dropped him. Everybody was going crazy. Everybody was saying, yo, Jake Paul, he's a dangerous opponent. He might be a good opponent for KSI because I don't think KSI was fighting during this time. So then what happened? Jake Paul had more fights. Then he caught out Tyron Woodley. He had a fight with Tyron Woodley. He beat Tyron Woodley by decision. Second fight with Tyron Woodley, he knocked Tyron Woodley out. This was clearly Jake Paul's peak. You know, he had a good record. He had a good background of, you know, destroying his opponents, stopping his opponents. He stopped every single one of his opponents. Now, I think this is where it started getting a little bit down for Jake Paul. I think this is where Jake Paul started to die off. And this is where he fought Anderson Silva, an MMA fighter that he looked up to. There's a picture of him and Logan Paul that they took with Anderson Silva when they were young kids. Now, a lot of people were questioning Jake Paul. Yeah, it's another MMA fighter, but it is Anderson Silva. He had a boxing match before he fought Jake Paul. You know, he's not just a retired MMA fighter. It was kind of like more 50-50, but then at the same time, it was leaning over Jake Paul since he was in his prime and considering that Anderson Silva was a retired MMA fighter. Now, what happened? Like I said, I think this is where Jake Paul's peak went down. I think this is where Jake Paul started to die down because if you watch that fight, it was really embarrassing for Jake Paul. First round, Anderson Silva did not throw maybe five punches. And Jay Paul didn't do anything with that. He couldn't put pressure on him. He couldn't try to knock him out. First round, Anderson Silva didn't throw anything. There's no excuse for that. There's no excuse. He was trying to find his range. He was trying to see what he was going to throw. He didn't throw anything. Now, this is embarrassing. And Tommy Fury brought it up in one of their press conferences. Anderson Silva didn't throw a punch, and when he threw a lazy jab to Jake Paul, Jake Paul snapped his head back and started licking his gloves and started doing some weird shit. After this fight, I think a lot of people started seeing Jake Paul as, you know what? He's probably not really that much of a great boxer. I think he's just overhyped, and the people that he does fight, it's either they're afraid of him or they don't have nothing to prove, but Anderson Silva just embarrassed Jake Paul, and that's when Jake Paul started losing credibility. Now, what happens next? He goes for Tommy Fury. More people knew right off the bat when this fight was announced that Tommy Fury was easily going to school Jake Paul. It's a real boxer, a youngster who's in his prime. Now, what ended up happening in this fight? Jake Paul got exposed. Not only because Tommy Fury is a real fighter, but because when he's in there with somebody who's putting pressure on him, who's not allowing Jake Paul to, you know, time his punches right, who's in there to fight, who's in there to jab at him and put pressure on him. Jake Paul can't handle the pressure. On top of considering the fact that Tommy Fury has a lot of boxing experience, Maybe not as quiet as other boxers, but he has boxing experience. You know, everything must be time. Your range must be in check. So Tommy Fury knows that. And this is why Jake Paul got schooled in the Tommy Fury fight. And I think after then, nobody respected Jake Paul as they did before. I feel like nobody feared Jake Paul anymore. And I feel like KSI's ego definitely went up. And I feel like KSI's confidence definitely went up. And I think KSI seen himself as the A-side, considering the fact that he just lost to Tommy Fury, a professional boxer. You know, on the other hand, KSI won a fight against a pro boxer, Joe Fournier. Obviously, he was with an elbow, but he still put up a great fight even before the elbow. 
Now let's talk about what happened recently, a couple weeks ago. Jake Paul got absolutely clowned by Nate Diaz. Absolutely embarrassment. Now we all knew that Jake Paul's hype was going to stop as soon as he lost to a fighter, to any fighter. But the way he got schooled by Tommy Fury was embarrassing already. He didn't need this embarrassment from Nate Diaz. We could just see all the showboating, all the clowning that Nate Diaz put on Jake Paul. Now, what's next for Jake Paul? You know, my brother talked about the past of Jake Paul, but what's really in his future? Well, again, he could go back to fighting UFC fighters, retired old fighters, or he could fight a real boxer. Now, for me to get back the respect that Jake Paul wants, he must fight a 15-0 or a 10-0 boxer. You're not going to get respect in the boxing community from fighting these retired UFC fighters. Nate Diaz wasn't in good shape. We've seen it. Now, could he box? Can he fight? Yes. But the absolute embarrassment that he put on Jay Paul wasn't working in Jake Paul's favor. Now, again, coming up is KSI versus Tommy Fury. Now, what does this have to do with Jay Paul? Well, if KSI loses to Tommy Fury, that sets up great for a Jay Paul versus KSI fight. And who knows? Maybe KSI versus Jay Paul, whoever wins, might get the rematch with Tommy Fury. But what if KSI wins against Tommy Fury? Well, KSI said that it's an 80% chance that Tommy Fury might be his last fight. So what does this mean for Jay Paul? Will he ever get the fight with KSI that he desperately needs? So I think Jay Paul at this moment needs KSI more than KSI needs Jake Paul. So again, either Jay Paul could go on to fight. I heard a rumor that he might be fighting Jorge Masvidal next, but who knows? But the, at the end of the day, I think his pay-per-view sales will lower it down the more MMA fighters that he fights. We want to see a real boxer in the ring with Jay Paul.